Sony has tried for years to build a smartphone that would take off in the United States the way they typically do elsewhere, and it just never really got there. They're not giving up though, and that's why we're now playing with this, the Xperia X Performance. It's a $700 flagship device from Sony, and although the name is a mouthful, I don't have a ton of great things to say about it. The thing about the Xperia X Performance is that for every nice thing I've come up with, there's a caveat that just kind of screws it all up. Just look at the screen up front for instance, it's a 5 inch IPS LCD running at 1080p and it's generally really nice, colors are bright, text is crisp, and it's a tremendous performer in broad daylight. Thing is, this is a $700 phone, Sony really couldn't have given us a quad HD panel, I'm not even asking for a 4K screen like we got on the Z5 Premium, this is a little ridiculous. Then there's the 23 megapixel camera around the back of the phone, which generally does take really nice photos when it's bright out. This is the same sensor that we saw in the Xperia X, which means that when things get a little dimmer though, you're gonna see a lot of noise and a lot of really soft edges. By the way, the camera is set to take eight megapixel stills by default. Now that's meant to allow for oversampling for better colors and hopefully less noise, and that's generally not what I saw. The usual slew of Sony camera apps are here too, and that can be tricky. While it is really kind of awesome to see a Tyrannosaurus Rex rampaging through my office, it did cause the phone to overheat and quit the camera app automatically. I've never seen this on a flagship smartphone before, and it's frankly kind of ridiculous. Fortunately, the X Performance is water resistant, so you could just do what I did and stick it under a soda machine to cool it off. I spent a little too much time dousing my phone in Diet Coke and Lemonade, but A, who could blame me, and B, the phone survived just fine and worked great after the fact. This is by far my favorite feature of the Xperia X performance and still firmly believe that this is something that all smartphone makers should aspire to. I just wish the rest of the Xperia X performance's design lived up to the high bar set by that waterproofing. See, between the phone's slightly chubby dimensions, the rounded corners, and the color choices available for it, the Xperia X Performance is one of the cutest flagship phones I've played with in a long time. That's not to say it's a perfect look though, for one, why is that power button not a fingerprint sensor? It's de rigueur on just about every other Android flagship out there, and also this is a $700 phone! At the very least, the Xperia X Performance lives up to its name and runs really smoothly. Now that's thanks to a Snapdragon 820 chipset in there, which by the way, just about all of Sony's competitors have leaned on as well, in addition to 3GB of RAM. My days include a lot of multitasking and a lot of gaming when I can get away with it, and the phone handled both of those scenarios just fine. In fact, the only time I saw it struggle was when I tried to use the AR camera modes, and things kind of went to hell. Now, part of the reason the phone runs so smoothly is because of Sony's approach to software, and what we're working with here is a customized build of Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. If you're like me, you're probably not a fan of Sony's interface. It's bright, it's garish, and it is actually kind of cool, but I'm a stock guy, and if that's you, you're not going to be pleased here. That said, there isn't a ton of bloatware, so if you don't mind a bit of extra stuff, you won't be too offended by what the Xperia X performance brings to the table. I don't like to see any major smartphone maker struggling because competition is good for all of us, and it only makes things better when these companies are working at the top of their game. This phone is not Sony at the top of its game. If all you're looking for is a smartphone that technically runs at flagship level, then yes, one could make an argument for buying the Xperia X Performance. It is cute and water resistant, and you are giving Sony money to try and continue doing good things in the United States. That's really it though, and Sony loyalism can and should only take you so far. Put simply, while all of Sony's competitors are trying to innovate and get an edge on each other, the Xperia X performance brings nothing new to the table. I really wanted to like this phone, but if this is honestly Sony at its best, then someone up top needs to look in the mirror and think about what the company should do next.